are slowly turning into The Sims, and that's horrible. This was supposed to be another run-of-the-mill overview of all the new releases in Creation Club. In my video yesterday, and the one covering the update for Fallout 4, I told you that was going to be something coming on this channel. But after spending two minutes staring into the eyes of those $2 dogs, I had an enlightening moment, something that just reached out to me and said, NO! You see, when Creation Club was announced all the way back at last year's E3, I was somewhat excited. Creation Club, bringing you smaller scale DLCs to Fallout 4, some made by Bethesda Game Studios and others made by mod authors. Giving mod authors a platform to get paid by their favorite company that they've been making mods for for years. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say I fell in love with that concept, but I definitely felt like it had promise. Fallout 4 and Fallout 4's pre-Creation Club DLC left a lot to be desired. A lot of cool concept and ideas that, for whatever reason, Bethesda Game Studios decided to not touch. There's also the lightest as far as story mode goes. We got a ton of workshop DLCs that people didn't really want. Yeah, there's a few people out there that wanted them, and some of them were actually pretty cool, like the robot DLC still goes down as one of my favorites. But many of those other workshop DLCs just fell flat, and even something as cool as being able to build your own vault somehow got screwed up to be really mundane and not even that exciting. In fact, the mod actually did it better months before. If you actually look at Creation Club today, it has a lot of similarities with the same type of DLC structure that The Sims 4 and 3 had. Adding in new aesthetics, new stuff packs, things for you to use in your different building modes, and actually giving you new things to apply to your characters. Fallout Force Creation Club at least has a ton of different skins, whether that be for armor or weapons. There's a few new packs of things that allow you to place things down in settlement mode. And you know, if you enjoy settlement mode, if you really take advantage of it, I bet you love those packs. Some of them are actually really worth their money and a great bargain. Some of them do bring actually new features to the table. New crafting tables, you can make donuts and coffee. That's exciting, but very similar to things you already had in Fallout 4. It largely is just a reskin and an existing feature. And although some of these settlement packs are really exciting, a quick market analysis shows that sim settlements is the most popular mod for fallout 4. it has its own little support groups and communities and mods made for that mod because of how successful and how many people just love the changes it makes what does it do it actually makes settlement mode way more hands off it makes it so you yes. still can be active with it but you don't have to individually build each structure and shelter yeah. if it does it would have released something like sim settlements through creation club i imagine there would be a lot of people buying that one I was curious, so I actually tallied up all the different items in Creation Club. Some of these obviously are bundles, so I didn't include the bundle, I just tallied each individual item in that bundle as, well, one item. And my math comes out to be a roughly 61 things around Fallout 4's Creation Club. And what constitutes that? Well, we have three weapons, we have six armors, we have 51 in what I would call the aesthetic category, that being weapon skins, pit boy paint jobs, armor paint jobs, armor skins, and of course those four workshop packs that we do see. And then finally, the thing that is probably the most depressing out of all this is we have one quest. It was a short quest that left a ton to be desired, but it brought the tunnel snakes back in a fairly lore friendly way. It gave you a new weapon and an armor, and it is by far my favorite thing on Fallout 4's Creation Club right now. If you look at some of the latest releases, you pretty much can just assume it's Fallout 4 Pets Edition. I think I titled one of my videos that, or made it into one of the thumbnails, because it is so freaking accurate. The latest and greatest from Creation Club for Fallout 4 brings in new dogs, ways to change dog meat around in his appearance, new outfits for some of your settlers, new paint jobs for your weapons and armors. You can make your Pip Boy look stylish now, and even though there's 10 other Pip Boy paint jobs, we want you to use this one and buy the latest one. The thing that boggles my mind the most about Creation Club is there are so many cool concepts out there. There's a lot of people with too much disposable income that are willing to throw money at cool Fallout 4 DLC or creations. Yet we are continually getting these things that you literally can pull straight out of the Sims 4 and put it in Fallout 4. I don't know who this video is really directed at, whether it be my audience, whether it be Bethesda themselves, or it's just something I wanted to get out there. But when I sat down tonight to actually film my Creation Club video, I couldn't because I didn't want to pay $6 for dogs in Fallout 4. I have $6, I have $60 that I I'm willing to spend on DLC if it's good DLC. I want weapons, I want armors, I want new quests, new experiences. I recognize and understand the limitations of the program. You can't do everything, but there are cool ideas and concepts out there that I think could be implemented through the system, and for at least right now, it's not being done, and I would love to see that changed. Fallout 4 is getting way too similar to The Sims, and although yes, maybe Bethesda is just seeing this as a way to make additional income, I think it's a mistake because they could be making a lot more money if they are actually doing what Fallout 4 was meant to do and be a combat-based, loot and shoot RPG that we all know and love and have dumped hundreds of hours into and still continue to. That's largely going to wrap it up for this one. For today's psychology fun fact of the day, I wanted to give you guys a somewhat interesting one, maybe somewhat relevant to what we're talking about. 
Quite a few years ago now, JCPenney CEO was changed. This new CEO was a younger guy and he was trying to be very forward thinking. If you don't know what JCPenney's is, it's like a department store, a clothing store, very similar to Macy's, or at least it once was. Well, this forward thinking CEO actually wanted to change the way sales worked. When you go into clothing stores nowadays, or really most stores, everything's on sale some of the time. Clothing stores are definitely the worst with this, although other stores do it, but whenever you go in there, there's always something discounted because the real price isn't the full price. The discounted price is more akin to the actual price of that item and where they could position it and still make a good amount of profit. Well, this new CEO was like, you know what? We're going to be honest with our consumers. We're going to show you the real price. We're not going to do sales every once in a while. You're just going to come into our store, find the price that we're offering, and it's going to be cheaper than the competitors, and it's going to be fair. They lost so much money when he was CEO. Apparently, they're still trying to regain money back from that one to two years while this policy was enacted. Nobody bought it because nothing was on sale, and people like seeing that on sale thing. It's a psychological thing. I can't really explain it fully, but the reason you see those sham sales all the time in different clothing stores is because it doesn't work without them, or it works a lot better with them. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Again, as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.